Hey folks, so there's a new Redux model making waves in the Kung Fu community. You can already grab it on Hugging Face. According to the creator, it's got an upgraded vision encoder better than the one used in the original Redux model from Black Forest Lab. Now let's break that down. The original Redux model from Black Forest Lab runs on a CGLIP2 vision encoder at 384 by 384 resolution. But this new one, it uses the latest CGLIP2 encoder too, but at 512 by 512. That means it can pick up on way more visual details. So at least in theory, this new version should outperform the original. But theory only goes so far, right? I've done some hands-on testing, and I'm about to walk you through it. Let's check it out. For the first test, I set up a workflow in Confluent to generate four images using four different setups, all with Redux models. The idea was to recreate a reference image and see which method nails it best. We adjust them based on how close each one gets to the original. To start off, I used the pixel wave diffusion model for the first two images. That model is basically a fine-tuned version of Flux.1 Dev from Black Forest Lab. The diffusion part stays the same in both cases. The only thing I swapped out was a Redux model. So the first Redux model I used is the one from Black Forest Lab called Flux1 Redux Dev. The second one is that the new model I mentioned earlier, Flux1 Redux Ciclip 2512. Now yeah I know, Flux and Flux sound super similar. So let me clear that up. This model is called Flex because it actually trained off a different base. It started from something called Flex.1 Alpha. Well, it's structurally a lot like Flex.1 Dev. It originally came from Flex.1 Chanel, which runs under an Apache 2.0 license. That's the key part. It keeps the model open and free to use. The original Flex.1 Dev, that runs under a non-commercial license. So this Flex version gives people a lot of more freedom. Alright, let's jump back into Kung Fu UI. So the name Flex1 Redux Ciclip to 512 pretty much says it all. This model is using the new Ciclip 2 vision encoder and it runs at 512 by 512 resolution. To make it work in Kung Fu UI, the creator developed a new node called Load Advanced Vision Model. The older node, the one made for 384 resolution, is still called Load Clip Vision. Quick tip though, in my testing, the old load clip vision node actually works fine with a new Flex Redux model too. They function pretty much the same way. Alright, let's move on to the next group of nodes that help generate our last two images. The key difference here is that this group uses Nunchaku, the latest tag for accelerating image generation, which I covered in my last video. If you missed that one, don't worry, I'll drop the link in the description below. Here's the cool part. When I ran this setup using the SVD quant model with both Redux models, it was about 5 times faster than the last group. That's a massive speed boost. Now let's switch gear to a different workflow so we can compare all four of our final images side by side. So here's what we are looking at. The four images on the left are all generated to match the original image on the right. The closer they look to the original, the better the result. Starting at the top left, this one uses the Flex-based diffusion model combined with the old Redux model from Black Forest Lab. The top right switch it up with the new Flex Redux model. The bottom two images speed things up with Nunchaku tag. You can really see how the different Redux models affect the final composition. The two on the left look pretty similar because they both use the old Redux model. The two on the right are also similar since they both use the new Flex Redux model. Now compare them to the original image on the right. Notice how the new Flex Redux model does a better job of copying the pose. In both images on the right, the women have their right foot tucked under their left leg's armpit. On the left side, the women are sitting in a more natural, relaxed position. Let's dive into how this pose copying feature works with other images. Check out the Redux model trying to replicate a yoga pose from the original picture. Now look at these two images made with the new Flex Redux model. They really nailed that tricky yoga pose. Pretty impressive. But yeah, the hands and feet still a bit off. Now I'm starting to think the new Flex Redux model isn't just about copying poses. It might actually help hold the whole composition together. Take a look at these spiral staircase images. You can see how both new Redux models create iron railings that really resemble the original. And check out the ground. There are three parts of green plants, just like in the original. But with the old Redux model, it only shows two parts. 
As awesome as the new Redux model is, there's a bit of the trade-off. Let's zoom in and check out these cobblestone textures on the ground. See how broken and messy they look? The plant parts also don't hold their shape very well. Now let's compare that to the old Redux model. The textures here are much cleaner, and the parts look way less glitchy. Let's look at another set of images. The original picture shows a woman's top with lots of fine details. The Flex Redux model does a great job of mimicking the pose and the shape of her clothes. But when we zoom in, we notice something's missing. The small intricate details in the clothing are mostly gone. Now let's check the image from the older Redux model. Here the shape of the clothes is a lot different from the original. But if we zoom in, we can actually see more of those fine details preserved. The bottom two images are from Nanchaku. You'll notice the same issue here. Details in the clothing get lost. Plus, when Nanchaku works with Redux, it tends to mess up the hands even more. If these examples aren't enough, let's go back to those staircase images from earlier. See how the texture gets totally scrambled in the Nanchaku and the Flex Redux versions? It's a pretty noticeable difference. Alright, so we know the new Flex Redux model is great at holding the composition together, but it tends to lose the fine details. On the flip side, the old Redux model keeps those details but struggles with the overall composition. So here's the big question. Can we get the best of both worlds? Can we keep the details and maintain the composition? Turns out we can, and it's actually pretty simple. All we need to do is add a LoRa. Let me show you how this works. This setup still uses the old vision encoder with a 384 by 384 resolution, and it runs the original Redux model from Blackboard's lab. But here's the key change. I've added two important nodes, the depth LoRa and the instruct pix to pix conditioning node. Here's the deal. The pixel port of the instruct pix to pix conditioning node pulls in a depth map, which comes from this part of the workflow. That depth map helps lock in the composition, making sure everything stays in place. So how well does this setup actually perform? Let's check out the results and see for ourselves. Let's kick things off by checking out some portrait examples. The two images on the left, no captions, are the original reference photos. The top right image comes from the workflow I just showed you. It uses the old Redux model but with an added depth LoRa from Blackboard's lab. The bottom right image is created with a new Flux Redux model and the latest Cyclip 2 vision encoder at a higher 512 by 512 resolution. Now take a look at this. The old Redux model with a depth LoRa actually does a better job keeping the pose close to the original. Honestly, it poses it out better than the bottom image. If you zoom in on the details, you can see that the woman's bands, her sleepless vest, and even the tassels on her jeans all match the original reference. But in the bottom image, there are no bands, a mid sleep suit instead of a sleepless vest, and no fringe on the jeans. You can really see the difference. Let's move on to another set of portraits. This time, the gap between the models is even bigger. The old Redux model keeps the pose consistent, while the new one, well, it kind of misses the mark. And remember the staircase example? In the old Redux image, the iron railings match the original almost perfectly. The new Flex model's version is close, but when you compare them side by side, it's just not quite as accurate. The upper image still wins for accuracy. Alright, after running all these tests, you might be thinking that the new Flex Redux model is completely useless, especially since the old Flex Redux model paired with the depth LoRa keeps all shining edge. But wait, that's not a full picture. There are actually two big reasons why the new Flex Redux model still matters. Let me explain. First up, the licensing. This new Flex Redux model is totally free for commercial use. It's under the Apache 2.0 license. That's a huge difference compared to the old Redux model from Black Forest Lab, which has a non-commercial license. So if you are using AI art to make money, this new model gives you way more freedom. Second, let's talk about the training. The Flex Redux model was trained from scratch using the Flex.1 Alpha model. 
created by the same developer. That checkpoint is also free to use, which is awesome. Now I haven't tested it myself because the file is massive. We are talking almost 22 GB. But here's the thing, when paired with a new Redux model, it might actually perform better. And get this, both models were trained entirely out of the author's own pocket. No big corporate backing, just pure dedication. If you like what he's doing, you can support him directly on GitHub or Patreon. Hold on though, don't click away yet. Here's the thing, the old Redux model combined with a Dapp LoRa has a big flaw. It's tricky to use for inpainting. And that's a problem because one of the Redux model's biggest strengths is its support for inpainting. So if you want more control over your composition when doing inpainting, the new Flex Redux model is probably your best bet. Here's what we are going to do. We are swap out the woman in this portrait with the woman from this image that has a white background. I actually share the workflow for this exactly test in one of my earlier videos. Check the video description for the link. But for now, let's jump in and see how it works with the new model. Now we move the woman from the plain white background to the street scene on the right. But surprisingly, the new Flex model didn't do as well as I expected when it came to copying the original pose. The older Redux model actually did a much better job of keeping the pose close to the reference. Let's check out another set of images. Same story. Flex Rita struggled to match the pose and even messed up the hand. On the other hand, the old Redux model nailed it. I also tested both models with the ACE Plus Subject LoRa. The idea here was to swap this outfit onto the woman in the bikini. This time, the Flex Redux model didn't manage to replicate the DNA shorts properly, and it even messed up the text on the t-shirt. The old Redux model wasn't perfect either, but it did much better. It swapped the shorts correctly and kept the text on the t-shirt intact. Other examples show the same trend. What's really cool about the ACE Plus Subject LoRa is that it can recognize the inner leaning of the skirt and knows it shouldn't be part of the virtual Choyang. But when used with the Flex Redux model, that smart feature just disappears. So yeah, the Redux model fell short again, especially with inpainting. I hope that's not too disappointing. Personally, I still think it has potential. I just need to dive deeper into it. Maybe I'll even share a workflow in a future video that really takes advantage of it. Stay tuned. Thanks for sticking with me through all these tests. I hope you learned something useful. Catch you in the next video.